illegal workforce. That's an internet connection and a phone call away. I don't have sex for money. I spend time with men for money. You nailed it. The sex is always free. The world's oldest profession has moved online and indoors. It's all about the glamour and making money. It starts two hours for a thousand, three hours for thirteen hundred. I'm Mariana Van Zeller, and we're going behind the supply and demand of the escort industry. And what kind of work am I supposed to do? Is sex involved or not? Many are caught in an abusive underworld. He almost killed me. He made me think I was going to die. While others fight for the freedom to simply work. Police officers! Please don't arrest sex workers! This is the American escort industry. The reality is whether you suck in the plaza or suck in the battery, you still suck in The Las Vegas airport. This is Sarah. She's flown from across the country to meet a new client, a man who booked her on the internet. My specialty is what they call GFE, girlfriend experience. I am your girlfriend. I'm your lover. I'm your girlfriend. I'm really, really good at it. Sarah won't show us her face because some of what she does is illegal. She works as an escort, part of a booming underground workforce. We've come here to learn how the escort industry operates. Four hours, 2400, from the reviews. Sarah got divorced and needed money. And this would be me. So she joined the sex industry. It starts two hours for a thousand, three hours for thirteen hundred. Like many women, she turned to the internet. Twelve hours for three thousand, or twelve hours plus breakfast in bed, thirty-five hundred. She works independently, no agencies, no pimps, just a laptop and a cell phone. Sarah is her name. She offers all sorts of different consultations, as she calls it. You can spend a full day with her for $6,000, or you can go for something simpler, which is a four hours dining and dessert for $1,600. The internet, the backbone of the 21st century sex industry. Prostitution is illegal in most of the United States, but if you look online, countless websites appear to sell sex. One after the other, after the other, after the other. You can have your pick of blondes, brunettes, redheads, couples, strippers, party girls, and of course, escorts. And we basically want to find out who these girls are and um, how this whole escort business operates. Well, I don't have sex for money. I spend time with men for money. The sex is always free. This is Amanda Brooks escort and author of the Internet Escorts Handbook. Amanda teaches women how to break into the business of independent escorting. First of all, selling your time for money is not illegal. Doctors and lawyers do it every single day. What is illegal is prostitution, which is selling sex for money. So, no, you can't go and advertise and say, I'll give you a for fifty dollars. No, that's, that's totally illegal, and if you get arrested for that, you kind of walked into it. In the online market for prostitution, thousands of escort websites are carefully worded. Sex is rarely offered, and clients are expected to read between the lines. For women who want to stick out from the pack, there's plenty of competition. Girls have to be very competitive no matter what niche they're in right now. Being on top of your business, uh, being on top of your marketing and advertising. I don't think I've ever done anything this sophisticated, actually. Today, Amanda's getting new photos for her website. One, two, three. That was beautiful. The demand for escorts is huge. And we're talking the entire gamut. That's beautiful. But generally, 80 to 90% of the clients are married. Oh, that was great. One, two, three. 
Marriage is great for business because the men realize that they're missing something. And we're a lot better than an affair because we're not going to go in there and, you know, try to take him away from his kids. We're not going to go in there and try to make him marry us. We're, we're very safe. I've disappointed and failed to live up to the standard I expected of myself. I must now dedicate some time to regain the trust of my family. Moments ago, Elliot Spitzer announcing he will step down effective next Monday, forced from office after he's linked to a pricey prostitution ring. A judge refuses to dismiss the indictment against alleged Manhattan Madam Kristen Davis. When New York Preparing Governor Elliot Spitzer was caught patronizing high-end escorts, agency owner Kristen Davis went down with Davis him. was arrested in March after police say a neighbor tipped them off. What interested me in particular about the sex industry is the economics of it. It came from a business background and it is a recession-proof industry. And there's a reason why it's called the world's oldest profession. Kristen didn't set out to be a madam. She was introduced to the sex industry while working at a multi-million dollar hedge fund. Within my week number two, I was asked to book a VIP trip to Vegas for the portfolio manager and to get strippers and to talk about body rub places they could go after hours and sometimes that included um, you know, having to book their escorts and that sort of thing. Kristen started one of New York's most successful escort agencies and became known as the Manhattan Madam. She says her agency earned millions each year. High-end prostitution is seen as glamorous. People cannot fathom why someone would pay over a thousand dollars an hour for somebody's time. Once they hear that, now their next question is, what's the girl like or what are they getting for that amount? Got lube, good lube, lots of it. Odorless, tasteless. The necessities. Condoms. Mm -hmm. Condoms, lots of condoms. Lots of condoms. <laughs> Sometimes we use rope. Large portable vibrator, rechargeable. As an escort, Sarah sees both men and couples who come to Las Vegas looking for a good time. So this is your mental checklist. This is the kind of this is what you bring in your brief briefcase. Exactly. The vibrator, the condoms, the lube, mm -hmm. um, the handcuffs, the rope. <laughs> this is in your briefcase. This is in my briefcase. Yes. You en you enjoy what you do. Absolutely. Oh yeah. When I was talking about you, I said prostitute before. Does do you not like that term? It doesn't bother me. No. It's um, technical, like accountant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't bother me. I mean, I know what I am. It doesn't, it doesn't stir me. Sarah's privileged in the world of prostitution. As an independent escort, she calls the shots and commands big money from her clients. But for many women who set out to become escorts, a much different reality awaits. The escort industry thrives in cities throughout the United States, but Las Vegas is ground zero. Married men, bachelor parties, couples looking for adventure. Tourists from around the world come here looking for pleasure. Although prostitution is illegal here, there's a thriving black market. So I just walked two blocks down the strip, and this is the amount of cards and uh, flyers that I got. I have over 50 here, and it's everything from, you know, Las Vegas girls, full service, fully nude, direct to your room. I mean, it's, it's crazy to think that this is actually, you know, prostitution is actually illegal here. I like the $69 special. Escort agencies send girls to hotel rooms for private lap dances. As long as they don't advertise prostitution, they're protected by free speech laws. An escort agency is legal, as long as no sex is involved. The problem is, is that there's really not any business unless there's at least the implication or the fantasy that sex will be involved. Agencies like these are a cottage industry booking escorts in and out of hotel rooms for quick turnarounds. The high-end agencies set an unrealistic expectation for everyone. 
because you look at the sex industry as being glamorous and all of this money and cars and boats and parties and this glamorous lifestyle and it's by and large you know uh, two percent probably of the overall industry I wonder what people think escort companies look like Detective Chris Boffman investigates pimps for the Las Vegas Police Department's vice squad. He sees the other 98%, the darker side of the escort industry. Tonight, he's investigating a man who violently beat women and forced them to work for an online agency. What's the biggest misconception you think people have of escort agencies? The idea that, you know, the phone rings and, uh, you know, there's some free-spirited woman on the other end in her high-rise. That's all in people's heads. That's, we've never seen that. We're just a few blocks from the Las Vegas Strip. Chris and his partner, Al Bies, are doing surveillance. Just below is a building with blacked-out windows and security cameras along the perimeter. It's home to two dozen escort agency call centers. So you're just right trying now. to sort of gather information here yeah. on this case that you're working mm -hmm. on right now. So this is a really good spot for us to sit back with the binoculars, pick up uh, license plates, see if there are any familiar faces that we notice that are hanging around these, uh, these escort services. And it's interesting because you see cars constantly stopping in front of the doors and going oh, yeah. by, right? Yep, that's what you'll see. And girls going in and out. You look a little closer, you'll start seeing the pimps too. There's a female walking in now. Yep, going in. Pimps are little known parts of the escort underworld. Some hang outside this building and try to recruit women. For the majority of women who work as escorts, this is the reality. Calls from one hotel room after another. At the end of the night, they return here to drop off a cut of the money. And this is what many people call high-end prostitution. That's your, your high-end escort going into a shady little call center to go drop off her service fee. Good looking girls. We're about to go inside the escort underworld to find out how it all works. The internet. Much of the sex industry has moved online and flourished. Hundreds of websites are devoted to helping escorts and clients find each other. They want to be with someone who's a runway model, they choose that. They want to be with somebody who's PSE or porn star experience, they choose that. There's something for everybody here. On a good week, Sarah spends 15 hours at appointments. She also lies to her family about her double life and says that the risks will make anyone paranoid. It's terrifying living with the knowledge that I could be busted because of what I do. It's absolutely terrifying. I worry a lot about it, so I screen the hell out of people. They have to tell me everything about them. Their real first, last name, they have to tell me where they work, they have to tell me how old they are, they have to tell me where they live. Thanks to the internet, I can tell if they're a real person or not. If they're a ghost, I don't see them. They could be Jack the Ripper, they could be law enforcement, they could be lying about anything. And if they're not completely straight up with me, I don't see them. Tonight, Sarah's meeting her new client. He's passed her screening, so she's convinced she'll be safe. There still is a bit of a risk of violence. But really, anybody's biggest weapon is just paying close attention at all times. And if somebody comes in and something doesn't feel right, you trust your gut. There's a lot of girls that get in and try it. Even the ones that are enthusiastic, they'll get in and try it. If it were easy, everybody would stick with it. It's not. It's just not. Not even at my level is it easy. Every weekend, hundreds of escorts work the hotels and casinos on the Las Vegas Strip. The night is just getting started. Former escort Annie Lobert is about to begin a night of outreach. 
I was the top call girl at the escort services that I worked. I considered myself a high-class prostitute, but I never said the word prostitute. High-class call girl is what I said. People think that sex work is so glamorous and that girls love it, but it's a lie. Once you have that first rape, the first beat down, I've had clients try to kill me and leave me for dead in the room. Annie worked as an escort for 16 years. She left the sex industry and started a ministry called Hookers for Jesus. Her mission is to help women leave the business. Be safe tonight. Be safe, girls, okay? Okay, God bless you, girls. Have a good night. Most of them are in the casino. You're not going to see a lot on the strip. They're in the casino going up and down the elevators, turning tricks. What, what will happen if they see the camera? They will get very upset. Annie agrees to take us inside a casino to show us how high-end prostitution works. There are security cameras everywhere, and no filming is allowed, so I'm wearing a tiny hidden camera. Ready? Let's roll. If I was working still, I would come here, because this, this place has a lot of high rollers. It's one of the higher class casinos on the Strip. I see a girl. She's with an older guy. Doesn't look right. She's working. She's probably in her 20s. He's probably in his 60s. It's definitely not her dad. She's Asian. He's a white, white man. Gray hair. She's laughing and sitting there with that guy. Like It's like the best day of her life. Because she's probably thinking about all the money he's going to give her. <laughs> right there. Oh, right there. They're working. These two girls right there. Oh, wow. Right there. Annie spots two women making the rounds. Hey, girls! Come here. Come here. So what are you guys doing here? Are you guys just hanging out? Yep. Yeah. Are you guys, like, watching your back right now? I know the security's not that bad right now. Everything's oh, fine. Oh, yeah. I think but we've got the shift change. There's a lot of, there's a yeah. lot of, uh, girls that just came out just now. Just, just be now, careful. Well, no, I mean, I saw a bunch, but... I hope you guys like uh, stay safe and everything. And are you guys okay? Yep. Well, thank you. Anyway, you girls have a good night. Bye. See you later. Bye. No more than five minutes later, the same girls appear to be negotiating with several men. One man offers six hundred dollars but they don't seem to come to an agreement. Soon after, the girls move on. Do you think the casinos know that this is happening? Yes, absolutely. And why don't they do anything to stop it? If a man loses $100,000, you're gonna wanna comfort him, right? Send him a girl, take care of him, woo and coo him, send him some alcohol, so when he wakes up, he'll pull out another 100000 and gamble it at your casino. You gotta keep him happy. We contacted several casinos. They all said that they don't support illegal activity and employees could be fired for promoting prostitution. Don't let the casinos fool you with their nice security systems. There's people on the take all over the place. Think about it. Everybody was on the take that I knew. The valet drivers, the cab drivers, the limo drivers, the bartenders, the hotel concierge. The host, casino host, you name it, pimpin'. Pimps are all around us. What's it like to go on a call for one of these agencies? They sell you, just, they sell you like a piece of meat. You know, they just don't say it in those exact words. Miss America? Yeah. This woman worked as an escort until very recently. She's a single mother, so she's asked us not to show her face on camera. The agency she worked for was in the same building I visited. If I went in there and I said, look, I'm interested in the escort service, I want to sign up, I want to work for you guys, but I don't want to have sex. They just might not ever call you. I mean, if they go as far as hiring you, they just won't call you. They would just never call me. Yeah. Nobody's going to pay thousands of dollars for a strip tease. 
to see a boob or something. <laughs> so how many calls were you getting a day? I'd say about like 15 calls. I worked until 5 a.m. I was running crazy up and down the strip to all these casinos. Um, like I started working that much when I um, met my, my guy. <laughs> Pimp, you mean? Yeah. He knew the owner of the escort agency that I, that was part of his sweet talk. So he got me what was called being a priority girl, mm. which was being the top four girls escorts to get called out. Like, it's like being an A-lister. Why did you stop? It became physical and he was abusive. You're a pimp? Mm-hmm. He almost killed me. He made me think I was gonna die. Like, he grabbed me by my neck and dragged me all the way across the room and slammed me on the ground and just kept kicking me and... Why? Because I said no. Because I didn't, he wanted me to go somewhere and I didn't want to go. How many girls do you know don't have a pimp and are in the escort service? Um, I only met like two the whole time. Out of dozens that you met? Oh yeah, hundreds of girls. And here they are on the side. So you'll click on one of them. Vice Detective Chris Boffman works on the Las Vegas Vice Squad's Pimp Investigation Team. This file is about a case... Um, the Pimp Investigation Team just closed a case on a man who was trafficking women through high-end agencies. He lured a woman to Las Vegas by promising to get her a job as a dancer. But then, he makes the pitch. You can work for me. I'll set you up with dates with, with, with really nice gentlemen. You do whatever they want for money. But when you're done with that money, that money all has to come back to me, and then I'll take care of you. And these dates would go through escort services? Yeah. Here in the city? Yeah. This is the 911 call. What happened after this? After this, she managed to fight her way out of the apartment and get down the stairs um, all the way to security. It's, it was through this 911 call that you came about this that's case? That's how we and got the case. Yeah, that's how we came on to learn about the, the individual that we were. So these are all photos that were posted on mm -hmm. actual on escort, escort sites, sites. Exactly. but they were actually all working for him. The right. money was going money to Money goes him. back to him, 100%. So why are the girls doing it? That's, well, I don't understand. You that. just heard the 911 tape, right? Why would someone do it if he threatened to cut up this girl's face and she wasn't even working for him? Imagine what he's doing to some of the other women. Do the escort services themselves know that there are pimps behind these girls? In my experience, they do. They know who the girl's pimps are. They'll say that we don't know. We don't know anything about that. We make them sign a contract saying that they can't have sex when they go on their dates. But they know exactly what's happening. We're on our way to meet with a man who owns an escort service. He's agreed to meet with us outside of his office at this bar, and he's, uh, he said he'd be wearing sunglasses to partially obscure his identity, but that he would tell us how the escort services really work. I have local politicians here that, you know, use the service, and uh, I want to be as discreet as possible. <laughs> You know, for me to do this, I'm really going outside the box and I'm going to piss off a lot of people. So why are you doing this? Why did you agree to talk to us? I think your audience should know the reality of the business. What you know? is the reality of the business? Well, it's not all glamour. Is it a profitable business? Oh, very profitable. Modern technology Amazing. has really increased my business. You know, when somebody wants to see pictures, I, I can do a little sideshow. Well, this is what we have on the menu uh, tonight. She's beautiful. Yes, uh, some are really beautiful and some are not so beautiful. But the customer can pick and, you know, these are real pictures. She's very popular. 
Men have these uh, instinctual drives, base instincts, and they have to be satisfied, okay? So basically what you're saying is that this is prostitution? There may be things that go on that's none of our business, wink, wink, but the girls sign a contract and we do not solicit prostitution, period. I cannot emphasize that enough. A lot of people have told us that the majority, the vast majority of these girls are actually working for pimps through these escort agencies like yours. Okay, that's um, very true. And I just cannot stand that part of the business. A lot of girls come to work with black eyes, for instance. Because they've been beaten by their pimps? Well, that's the assumption, you know. Getting beaten up is very common. There's a lot of drama in the business. But the unfortunate fact is, is that they all have men. And I need to make money. So what am I going to do? I need girls. Look at me as a broker of commodities. And the females are a commodity. I'm doing a service, not only for men that have these desires for entertainment, but for the girls. So it all works out, a nice little family network. Las Vegas. Prostitution is the city's biggest open secret. Escort services cater to tourists looking for sex and companions. And they have an underground army of promoters to help bring in clients. We hear that a lot of the escort services uh, rely on taxi drivers to bring them customers, clients. So today our producer Darren here is going to be geared up with a hidden camera and he's going to try and talk to some of these taxi drivers and uh, you know see how it all works. How you doing? Pretty good. What's going on? Busy night tonight, huh? Yeah, it was good. Hey, can, can I ask you a question? Uh, do you know uh, how I could go about getting a lady? Sure. Yeah. Do uh, you know how to uh, go about getting a lady in this town? Uh, I did. You know, there is, there is some agency they can send you girls about this straight to the room. Okay. Yeah. And the girls, what do they what do they do? Anything? They start doing uh, like they're doing in a private room at strip club. Oh, okay. But some of them they do more. You know what I mean? Yeah. Escorts. They come to your room. Is this a a definite for sure thing? Is that a definite? Um, yeah, just number, then I'll ask you for a reference number. Just give them that number. Okay. Full service. Yeah, yeah. Just don't talk. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because it's new entertainment to your room. What the girl does after is not the service. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know what I mean? You know what I'm saying? One driver after okay. another. Cards and brochures for escorts with a reference number at the bottom. If a call goes through, the driver gets a cut for steering clients to the agency. Go ahead and call up that number and say, yeah, 22589. Go ahead and I'll take care of it. Taxi drivers can lose their jobs for getting kickbacks from the agencies. All of the taxis here have security cameras for safety, so this driver steps outside. When you call, you have to make sure you're in the room, you know what I'm saying? Okay. And then, he makes the pitch, but not for an escort agency. What do you think about her? I drive this car. This driver offers to set him up directly with a 21-year-old girl that he drives himself. Hey, yeah, if you're going to spend money in town, you might as well get, you know, some decent pleasure out of it. Yeah. 
In Las Vegas, an entire underground economy profits from the illegal sex industry. But those who have sex for money are considered a criminal class, and they take on the most risk. Sex work in all of its glorious forms will never go away. I hope it never goes away because I'd be out of a job. <laughs> this is Jenny, graduate student and sex worker. Vegas has become very successful at selling an image of sex and often an image of female sexuality. Corporations make a lot of money off of these images. Unfortunately, workers in the sex industry are not afforded the same rights as others in the service industry. In fact, we're arresting them and spending millions of taxpayer dollars on arresting them and throwing them in prison. Jenny heads the Las Vegas Sex Workers Outreach Project fighting for the rights of prostitutes who work illegally in the city. I accept the reality that there are young people, old people, of all genders, of all sexual orientations forced into the sex industry. I don't think that it means we need to criminalize people in the sex industry. This is the Vegas Slut Walk. Hundreds of activists have gathered on the Strip to protest sexual violence. The provocative clothing is part of the message. For countless illegal sex workers, rape and sexual violence are common. If a woman is raped, she's asked if she's a whore. If a whore is raped, she's asked, what did you expect? as if selling erotic services somehow meant that she couldn't actually be raped. People in the sex industry who are working illegally are not able to um, go to law enforcement when they need help. For instance, if a customer becomes violent, they can't go to law enforcement and ask for protection. This is the Clark County Detention Center. Each year, thousands of prostitutes come through this door. It's just past midnight. We're here at the jail, and uh, they just brought in this woman who uh, is a suspected prostitute. They're checking her for any weapons or drugs, and uh, they say that this is when this place starts getting busy. By the end of the night, if, it, if there are double squads working, or depending on how many detectives there are out, um, work in streets or enforcement. By 3, 4 in the morning, this whole back row could be full. Vice detectives routinely arrest prostitutes in undercover stings in hotels and casinos. But the escort services are more difficult to target. The problem with the escort services are, one, how do we prove that these guys know that this is going on? Because they'll, they'll tell them, oh, you're not allowed to have sex and they will hide behind their little flyers and their waivers and the fact that, they're a, you know, that they have a general business license in the city. But they know what's going on. They all know. Not just in Vegas, but you name the city, they know. In major cities throughout the United States, escort agencies and law enforcement play a cat and mouse game. Today we announce uh, a 144 count indictment against members and associates of high class NY. In New York, an alleged high-end prostitution ring is busted. Authorities believe high class NY made over seven million dollars in three years, providing escorts to Wall Street bankers. Some clients spend more than ten thousand dollars in a single night. The owners and the prostitutes all face charges that could land them in jail. But the clients? So far, they've gotten off clean. 
the way that it's being done now where you go after the person running the agency. Somebody else will pop up and start an agency. Girls still work independently. It doesn't address the problem at all. Girls won't work if there are no clientele. So you have to address the demand. I want you to look at me. Not like that, you're nasty. 53 years old, 27 years with HIV. This is Brooklyn's John School. Most of these men were busted trying to buy sex from an undercover officer. The district attorney's office is trying out a new approach, targeting demand for prostitution. Their secret weapon? Rosetta, a 53-year-old former prostitute who's now HIV positive. The John School teaches men that prostitution is not a victimless crime. Physically, I'm there, right? But emotionally, I'm not there. I'm trying to play tic-tac-toe on the ceiling. I'm trying to think about anything about except where I'm at. The reality is I was not even thinking about you. It was all a dream. It doesn't often serve me to get up in front of a bunch of strangers and talk about something that caused a lot of shame and pain in my life. But I'm willing to do that if it can help somebody. So yeah, I started with the escorts, you know, agency making good money to eventually, because of the drugs, ending up at a street level. You'll hear like girls that work in the escort service saying, I'm not like that nasty You know what I mean? I work in the escort service. I'm not on the street giving head for $20 or 15 And they put each other down. But the reality is whether you suck in the plaza or suck in the Bowery, you still sucking Right? I think a lot of people involved in the sex trade industry will say that they're fine with it and that there's no kind of side effect emotionally for them. And I think that they say that because they have to justify being in that. But what else would she say if she's still doing it? So I do think there's sex workers that do it because they like it. In the beginning, they're in the honeymoon phase. They're lying to themselves. Some researchers claim that nearly two-thirds of prostitutes have some form of post-traumatic stress disorder. We met many women in the escort industry, and there are plenty of mixed feelings about the work itself. You don't know if it's going to be a good day or a bad day. Paranoia, low self-esteem, fits of rage, massive depression. There's voices in your head that say, just end it. You're you're just an ex-prostitute. You'll never be anything but a whore. What did it feel like the first time you had sex for money? I had to get drunk. <laughs> the very first time it was just uh, gross to me. I just remember just feeling disgusting. I think that many sex workers experience some kind of um, psychological effects from the job, but I think that those effects are mainly because of social stigma and horror stigma and people shaming them for the work that they do. You just have to learn to deal with it in your own individual way and some women never learn and some do. Some shut off the emotions completely, which I don't feel is healthy. But if you're getting hurt all the time, it's not healthy either and it's probably a sign you need to Reevaluate whether you want to be an escort anymore or if you need to change the way in which you approach it. Uh, it's just, it's, it can be tough, yeah. It's 2 a.m. Sarah's returning from an appointment with a client. I feel exhausted. Tapped, completely tapped. There is an expiration date for how long I feel I can do this. I do think that there's going to come a time that my allure just wanes, and it's inevitable. Not being able to do this does, does scare me, because it is my profession, and there really isn't anywhere else to go. Tonight, her client left her $1,600 in an envelope. Men come and see girls like me because their wives are not having sex with them. It's really that simple. Part of why we do well is because we are able to keep secrets.
illegal workforce. That's an internet connection and a phone call away. I don't have sex for money. I spend time with men for money. You nailed it. The sex is always free. The world's oldest profession has moved online and indoors. It's all about the glamour and making money. It starts two hours for a thousand, three hours for thirteen hundred. I'm Mariana Van Zeller, and we're going behind the supply and demand of the escort industry. And what kind of work am I supposed to do? Is sex involved or not? Many are caught in an abusive underworld. He almost killed me. He made me think I was going to die. While others fight for the freedom to simply work. Police officers! Please don't arrest sex workers! This is the American escort industry. The reality is whether you suck in the plaza or suck in the battery, you still suck it. The Las Vegas airport. This is Sarah. She's flown from across the country to meet a new client, a man who booked her on the internet. My specialty is what they call GFE, girlfriend experience. I am your girlfriend. I'm your lover. I'm your girlfriend. I'm really, really good at it. Sarah won't show us her face because some of what she does is illegal. She works as an escort, part of a booming underground workforce. We've come here to learn how the escort industry operates. Four hours, 2,400, from the reviews. Sarah got divorced and needed money. And this would be me. So she joined the sex industry. It starts two hours for a thousand, three hours for thirteen hundred. Like many women, she turned to the internet. Twelve hours for three thousand, or twelve hours plus breakfast in bed, thirty-five hundred. She works independently, no agencies, no pimps, just a laptop and a cell phone. Sarah is her name. She offers all sorts of different consultations, as she calls it. You can spend a few girls going in and out. If you look a little closer, you'll start seeing the pimps, too. There's a female walking in now. Yep, going in. Pimps are little-known parts of the escort underworld. Some hang outside this building and try to recruit women. For the majority of women who work as escorts, this is the reality. Calls from one hotel room after another. At the end of the night, they return here to drop off a cut of the money. And this is what many people call high-end prostitution. That's your, your high-end escort going into a shady little call center to go drop off her service fee. Good looking girls. We're about to go inside the escort underworld to find out how it all works. The internet. Much of the sex industry has moved online and flourished. Hundreds of websites are devoted to helping escorts and clients find each other. If they want to be with someone who's a runway model, they choose that. If they want to be with somebody who's PSE or porn star experience, they choose that. There's something for everybody here. On a good week, Sarah spends 15 hours at appointments. She also lies to her family about her double life and says that the risks will make anyone paranoid. It's terrifying living with the knowledge that I could be busted because of what I do. It's absolutely terrifying. I worry a lot about it, so I screen the hell out of people. They have to tell me everything about them. Their real first last name, they have to tell me where they work, they have to tell me how old they are, they have to tell me where they live. Thanks to the internet, I can tell if they're a real person or not. If they're a ghost, I don't see them. They could be Jack the Ripper, they could be law enforcement, they could be lying about anything. And if they're not completely straight up with me, I don't see them. Tonight, 
Sarah's meeting her new client. He's passed her screening, so she's convinced she'll be safe. There still is a bit of a risk of violence. But really, anybody's biggest weapon is just paying close attention at all times. And if somebody comes in and something doesn't feel right, you trust your gut. There's a lot of girls that get in and try it. Even the ones that are enthusiastic, they'll get in and try it. If it were easy, everybody would stick with it. It's not. It's just not. Not even at my level is it easy. Although prostitution is illegal here, there's a thriving black market. Thank you. So I just walked two blocks down the strip, and this is the amount of cards and uh, flyers that I got. I have over 50 here, and it's everything from, you know, Las Vegas girls, full service, fully nude, direct to your room. I mean, it's, it's crazy to think that this is actually, you know, prostitution is actually illegal here. I like the $69 special. Escort agencies send girls to hotel rooms for private lap dances. As long as they don't advertise prostitution, they're protected by free speech laws. An escort agency is legal, as long as no sex is involved. The problem is, is that there's really not any business unless there's at least the implication or the fantasy that sex will be involved. Agencies like these are a cottage industry, booking escorts in and out of hotel rooms for quick turnarounds. The high-end agencies set an unrealistic expectation for everyone because you look at the sex industry as being glamorous and all of this money and cars and boats and parties and this glamorous lifestyle and it's by and large, you know, uh, two percent probably of the overall industry. I wonder what people think escort companies look like. Detective Chris Boffman investigates pimps for the Las Vegas Police Department's vice squad. He sees the other 98 percent, the darker side of the escort industry. Tonight he's investigating a man who violently beat women and forced them to work for an online agency. What's the biggest misconception you think people have of escort agencies? The idea that, you know, the phone rings and, uh, you know, there's some free-spirited woman on the other end in her high-rise, that's all in people's heads. That's, we've never seen that. We're just a few blocks from the Las Vegas Strip. Chris and his partner, Al Bies, are doing surveillance. Just below is a building with blacked out windows and security cameras along the perimeter. It's home to two dozen escort agency call centers. So you're just right trying now. to sort of gather information here yeah. on this case that you're working on right now. So this is a really good spot for us to sit back with the binoculars, pick up uh, license plates, see if there are any familiar faces that we notice that are hanging around these, uh, these escort services. And it's interesting because you see cars constantly stopping in front of the doors and going oh, yeah. by, right? Yep, that's what you'll see. Full day with her for $6,000, or you can go for something simpler, which is a four hours dining and dessert for $1,600. The Internet, the backbone of the 21st century sex industry. Prostitution is illegal in most of the United States, but if you look online, Countless websites appear to sell sex. One after the other, after the other, after the other. You can have your pick of blondes, brunettes, redheads, couples, strippers, party girls, and of course, escorts. And we basically want to find out who these girls are and um, how this whole escort business operates. Well, I don't have sex for money. I spend time with men for money. The sex is always free. This is Amanda Brooks, escort and author of the Internet Escorts Handbook. Amanda teaches women how to break into the business of independent escorting. First of all, selling your time for money is not illegal. Doctors and lawyers do it every single day. What is illegal is prostitution, which is selling sex for money. 
So, no, you can't go and advertise and say, I'll give you a for $50. No, that's, that's totally illegal, and if you get arrested for that, you kind of walked into it. In the online market for prostitution, thousands of escort websites are carefully worded. Sex is rarely offered, and clients are expected to read between the lines. For women who want to stick out from the pack, there's plenty of competition. Girls have to be very competitive no matter what niche they're in right now. Being on top of your business, uh, being on top of your marketing and advertising. I don't think I've ever done anything this sophisticated, actually. Today, Amanda's getting new photos for her website. The demand for escorts is huge. And we're talking the entire gamut. That's beautiful. And but generally, 80 to 90 percent of the clients are married. Oh, that was great. One, two, three. Marriage is great for business beautiful. because beautiful. the men realize that they're missing and something. So and we're a lot better than an affair because we're not going to go in there and, you know, try to take him away from his kids. We're not going to go in there and try to make him marry us. We're, we're very safe. I've disappointed and failed to live up to the standard I expected of myself. I must now dedicate some time to regain the trust of my family. Moments ago, Elliot Spitzer announcing he will step down effective next Monday, forced from office after he's linked to a pricey prostitution ring. A judge refuses to dismiss the indictment against alleged Manhattan Madam Kristen Davis. When New York Governor Elliot Spitzer was caught patronizing high-end escorts, agency owner Kristen Davis went down with him. Davis was arrested in March after police say a neighbor tipped them off. What interested me in particular about the sex industry is the economics of it. It came from a business background and it is a recession-proof industry. There's a reason why it's called the world's oldest profession. Kristen didn't set out to be a madam. She was introduced to the sex industry while working at a multi-million dollar hedge fund. Within my week number two, I was asked to book a VIP trip to Vegas for the portfolio manager and to get strippers and to talk about body rub places they could go after hours. And sometimes that included um, you know, having to book their escorts and that sort of thing. Kristen started one of New York's most successful escort agencies and became known as the Manhattan Madam. She says her agency earned millions each year. High-end prostitution is seen as glamorous. People cannot fathom why someone would pay over a thousand dollars an hour for somebody's time. Once they hear that, now their next question is, what's the girl like or what are they getting for that amount? Got lube. Good lube, lots of it. Odorless, tasteless. The necessities. Condoms. Mm -hmm. Condoms, lots of condoms. Lots of condoms. <laughs> Sometimes we use rope. Large portable vibrator, rechargeable for the ladies. As an escort, Sarah sees both men and couples who come to Las Vegas looking for a good time. So this is your mental checklist. This is the kind of, this is what you bring in your brief, briefcase. Exactly. The vibrator, the condoms, the lube, mm -hmm. um, the handcuffs, the rope. <laughs> this is in your briefcase. This is in my briefcase, yes. You, en you enjoy what you do? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. When I was talking about you, I said prostitute before. Do you not like that term? It doesn't bother me. No? It's um, technical, like accountant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it doesn't bother me. I mean, I know what I am. It doesn't, it doesn't stir me. Sarah's privileged in the world of prostitution. As an independent escort, she calls the shots and commands big money from her clients. But for many women who set out to become escorts, a much different reality awaits. The escort industry thrives in cities throughout the United States, but Las Vegas is ground zero. Married men, bachelor parties, couples looking for adventure. Tourists from around the world come here looking for pleasure.